Hello and welcome to this ET Now special. Today I am in conversation with Abhimanyu Munjal. He's 33 years old, he's from the Hero Motorkov family and took the bold decision of diversifying the group. He's entered financial services. Hi Abhimanyu, thank you so much for joining us Hi, here Nantana. on ET Now. So you could have joined the family business and just looked after the two-wheeler business. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to diversify? What attracted you to financial services? My heart has always been in financial services and uh, as after college, after I, I actually went to Doon School and I graduated from a boarding school and after that I went to the UK for college. And after college I worked with two banks, ABN AMRO and Citibank. And since then my heart has always been in financial services but I think the group and the family have always considered to put in investments only in our existing businesses and they were always a bit wary of diversifying. So it took a long time to convince the family to say, you know, convince the family to diversify from our core business and we saw a huge opportunity. Apart from passion, I think I was passionate about financial services. We saw a huge opportunity in inclusion in terms of the underpenetrated market and we believed that the next big wave would come for the group from, from the financial services business. Financial services does seem to be the buzzword these yeah. days. It's the hot sector. I can't call it a sunrise sector. But when you went to your grandfather, uh, was he supportive? When you went to your uncles, uh, you know, Mr. Pavan and Sunil Munjal, were they supportive? So um, they they were always apprehensive, right? They've been very supportive after I've gotten into it. But before getting into the business, they were very apprehensive because it's very easy to lose money there. And... Uh, we did not, as a group, did not have any knowledge of financial services. So we always used partners to, to do our financial services for, for, for the captive uh, business. But once we got in, now they are supportive and they are more in terms of a mentor mode. We started our journey in financial services with two-wheeler finance, which was uh, the more lowest hanging fruit, the captive. And with obvious synergies with Hero Motor Corp. Absolutely. Then Hero Honda, I would imagine. Absolutely. So if you look at most of the large OEMs across the world, they all have very, very significant sized diversified financial services business. When I got into this, I had a mandate from my uncle, Mr. Pawan Manjal, my chairman now, that Abhiman, you don't get into only two-wheeler finance. Let's create a diversified financial services vertical which would actually, in the true words of diversification, true meaning, we will diversify from two-wheelers. So what all do you have now besides two-wheeler finance? What all are you lending for? <laughs> so we, we have two clear themes, which is consumption, and the second is uh, SME. In consumption, my, our, our philosophy or my philosophy is the man in the street is my customer, the real man who buys a two-wheeler. When we started the business, we were a 300 crore asset size business company with two people. We've grown that to 10,000 crores in the last four years. So you have 10,000 crores under as, uh, assets, assets under, under management. management. Yes, so we've grown that to 10,000 crores and we have about 4,000 people. When we started, was we were only two wheelers. Now, focusing on the two themes that I said, one was consumption and the second was uh, SME. In the consumption theme, we have two wheeler finance. We've got pre-owned cars, which is used car finance. We, we, we have personal loans and we have consumer durable. In the SME, we have loan against property, which is mortgages. We have working capital loans, term loans, balance sheet lending, anything and any everything that the SME requires in terms of financial services, we are there to cater for them. And when we started the business, I used to come back home, to your point on my grandfather, I used to come back home and I've lived with my grandfather and he used to ask me every day, Manu, how many bikes hui? <laughs> right? And I remember, uh, my first year, I did 52,000 two-wheelers we financed. Now, today, if he was there with me and he asked me that question, we finance a bike every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds? Yeah. So, we, we so how many did you do in 2016? 2016, we did somewhat uh, about uh, 400,000, okay. right? Now, we are doing about 60,000 a month or 70,000 a month. Total, we are, we, we, we are doing about... We are targeting a million bikes this year. You know, the tagline that we want to follow, one is the man the man on the street is my customer. Second is Khwabo Se Hai Ishq. Right? That was our campaign which we did. We believe we are fulfilling dreams of people. We are a very unique company because most of our two-wheeler customer, he comes to us very young. Two-wheeler is the first mobility vehicle, yeah. you know, a customer is, is, is getting. And 
believe it or not, 78% of the portfolio is new to credit. So they have no credit history. We actually get them on board for the first time to build a credit history. This actually is with what Prime Minister Modi is actually focusing on, which is financial inclusion. We are the first window of finance for most of customers that we, we, we deal with. And over the last four years, we've not only diversified from two-wheelers to loan against property to SME, et cetera, et cetera, we've also covered a lot of ground. We've covered from one location to 1,000 odd locations. So I'm at the smallest locations in India, locations like Padrona, which I also had never heard of till I, till I got into the business. So you said you want to finance or you are already financing a bike every 30 seconds. Uh, what I want to also understand is uh, if someone were to come to you for financing a hero bike, would, it, would they get a lower rate than they would get at traditionally from any other NBFC or bank? So maybe not a lower rate, but what they would get is a finance for sure. <laughs> so people who are not eligible, we would actually give them a dream, mm. right? And our promise to the customer is transparency. We'll be asked more transparent than any, any other competitor. We, are, we use a lot of technology. So if you go to a dealership, we, we were the first NBFC in the country to do end-to-end -end from customer acquisition to a dispersal on a technology platform. I don't know if you've got an Aadhaar card. Have you got an Aadhaar card? No, I'm one of the 1% of the adult <laughs> population which doesn't have it. Okay, okay. So I remember when I went and got the, my Aadhaar card, I was pretty, I was very impressed and uh, amazed that they had a double screen. So when they were doing a login of my, my details, I could see from the other side what they're logging in. Hmm. So that there is transparency. Yeah. So I have actually replicated that okay. in, in all our dealership. You have to understand the profile of a two-wheeler customer is very different from a lot of customers that you meet or, or he's actually the real man on the street, right? But then what about recovery? Is How big a concern is that? It is a concern, but now with, with Aadhaar and new technologies and bureaus coming in, it's making it easy for us to do, uh, to, to, to actually identify the credit and identify risk. Did you begin with a high delinquency rate? What was your experience like? So when we began, we were very small, so the delinquencies were low. But now we have seen the delinquencies have slightly blown up, but it's under control. As the rural you go, uh, del delinquencies are high because the customer is still very, very cash driven. He's not, he does, he's so not. Then you must have taken a hit uh, around the time of demonetization. So we did. We did take a hit in, under, uh, in demonetization. There was uh, a lot of customers who were holding the money, right? For them, the hierarchy of needs were more important than paying EMI. So we did, but things are now improving. So we've used a lot of innovations to actually push collections and go to the so customer. Can you share with us what they were? What did you have to do? The secret of collections is persistent. So we actually got our teams to move from sales to collect. You know, when the demot happened on 8th of November, uh, instead of us going to the customer and saying, Paise de do, you know, the customer would have been taken aback. My view, and I told the teams, and I, we, we, we decided that we will stand by the customer. More important than collecting that month was brand. Mm. This brand has been created over decades of my ancestors, my granddad, my uncles. There's a responsibility this of being a Munjal as well. Absolutely. So for us, we didn't want to go and, you know, go there and say the hero wale aate or they are saying Paise de do in difficult times. So we took, a, we took a step to say we will stand by the customer, we'll give him time, but we'll be persistent in engaging with him. Yeah. So we kept engaging with him through November and December to see everything is okay, don't worry, don't give me money today, give me money tomorrow. And it worked. Since we started the company, we've, I've always maintained and I've always asked my team to be emotional, emotionally engaged with both all partners, whether it's my channel partners or it's my customer. And that's the promise that we want to give to our customer. So if you ever decide to go in for fundraising, the guys you get on board better feel like this, right? <laughs> so we did, you know, we did raise we did raise funds in uh, September September uh, last year. I think six months have been amazing with these guys. We got Chris Capital and Credit Suisse on board, and uh, I've, I've built an emotional connect. One of my preset criteria was I need someone who I can sit with, have a coffee with, I can go for dinner with. You know, that's the emotional connect that I needed with someone who's sitting on my board. I didn't want the color of money is same for me, right? Mm. So I wanted smart money and a person who understands me. And I think uh, over the last six months, we've, I've experienced Chris Capital as a fantastic investor who've always been there. 
one of the things I told them when when we were uh, we ran a process where we met about uh, we met about 30 40 investors and we chose narrowed it down to about four and while they were pitching we said I'm looking for a 3 a.m. friend right I don't want to be calling my uncle at 3 a.m. because yeah. if I call him at 3 a.m. he'll say Manu it's uh, <laughs> it's 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 time to sleep let's not you know he, he anyway doesn't like to talk shop at home and whenever I oh, he doesn't no absolutely mm -hmm. not okay. he says this is this is home time this is so are you the same no, I'm very passionate about what I do. So I like to come home and just talk to my uncle, talk to my brother, talk to whoever I can about how my day went, what we are planning to do in business. What did you see, ADR? Would you like to share this? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll laugh. It's, our, our, our growth has been over 130, 140%. What kind of market share do you have now? All lines of businesses are different. In the two-wheeler finance, so out of the 10,000 crores, about 20% is two-wheeler. Most people, the bankers, media, uh, stakeholders, peers associate us to be a two-wheeler financier. And this is what the family, the chairman and me really did not want to do. We wanted to diversify. So uh, in terms of market share, in the Hero Moto, we have about 30% market share. In loan against property, SME uh, and emerging corporate finance, the market is very big. I am a, I'm, I'm a very, very, very small player. 40% of SMEs do not have access to finance. Correct. So it's, it's an opportunity where people like us, NVFCs, small finance banks, payment banks, who have lo lower cost structures and have larger reach can actually reach to the end consumer. The thesis when we got into the business was more the financiers, higher the penetration. With that time for a short commercial break, stay tuned to ET now. We'll be back in less than two minutes to continue our conversation with Abhimanyu Munjal of the Hero Group. <music> Welcome back to this ET Now special. I'm Nantara Rai. Today I'm in conversation with Abhimanyu Munjal, the founder of Hero FinCorp. It was Abhimanyu who decided to diversify the Hero Group into financial services. Abhimanyu, where do you see Hero FinCorp five years down the road? My aspirational target is 35,000 crores of asset size by 2020, okay. which is not even five years, which is yeah. uh, nearly here, yeah. right? We are at, uh, we should be closing at about 10, 11,000 this year. It's not going to happen uh, organically. Hmm. Uh, we have set up a housing finance company, okay. which is a subsidiary of Hero FinCorp in which we will do uh, all sorts of housing from affordable to, 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 to metro and the main size housing. Also, we are looking at some inorganic, uh, inorganic sure. growth. So by when will you close an acquisition? <laughs> I, I, I hope soon. You know, when we started uh, in 2012, the family was apprehensive, right? <laughs> they were pretty apprehensive to, to give me money and uh, they gave me... Would you mind if I asked you how much they gave you <laughs> to start with? So, uh, you know, the story is when I, when I started, it, I inherited a company. This company was formed in 1991 by my grandfather to do two-wheeler finance. But at that time, he thought that it's better to put money into uh, the hero business and buy machinery, you know, rather than, you know, diversifying, which was very good. And that's why Hero Moto is where it is today. It was doing passive sourcing of, of vendors and dealers' uh, needs, right, without technology, without processes, without people. So when I inherited the company, the company already had 90 crores of capital. Okay. It had 90 crores of capital. It had a 300 crore asset size with two people. So first year they said, you, you, you this, can, is this is it. You, <laughs> you go with what you want to do. You know, you, you have a plan. You see what you can do. So 2012, 1st of May is when we started making the plan. 2nd of April 2013 is when we went live. I remember the day we went live, we didn't have an office. Right? <laughs> I started from, I started from a Hiromoto living room. Okay. And then my granddad said, Manu, this is not your office. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked us out. And uh, we rented a place in, in Saket, a 600 square feet office. And we did a big event on 2nd of April 2013. That's when we, we financed our first bike. We had at this dealer called Pashupati. That was the first time we got the whole family, all my uncles, all the stakeholders to there, to, to the dealer to, to, to deliver the bike to the, to the first customer. And I have that number plate in my office, the first customers. We gave the bike and suddenly the dealer said, sir, where is my disbursement? <laughs> so we realized, shit, we've forgotten the process that we have to give money. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> we financed a customer, yeah. we had to give money. Yeah. 
So through the six, seven months, we had forgotten to, uh, to, to draw down a process. <laughs> so we made a ceremonial and gave him a check, right? We called for a check and I, yeah. we gave him a check. We didn't know a disbursement process. We, we financed the bike. I didn't have a credit team. So my business head and me were underwriting cases. Okay. So it was a great journey. And that is the time when we had 90 crores, 300 crores of asset size. And we had planned to do about 25 or 30,000 two-wheelers, something like that. We did 52,000. We reached like 600 crores of asset size. That's when the family said, and I this made profit. This is big business. This yeah. is this business. And these guys are doing, they, they started trusting me slightly. They said, okay, he's doing, he's going the right direction. Yeah. Then they gave me some money. And you said you're looking to grow organically into new parts of financial services, new segments. Can you share with us what they could be? What is so, it that is exciting? Organically into, in, in, in lending businesses, We've got into digital finance in a big way, where we are doing, we've tied up with uh, e-com players like Paytm. We have a large program going for them to, sub to finance their supply chain. Uh, Snapdeal, we have another program with them to supply the fi uh, supply chain. And we are going to tier two e-com players as well, yeah. because they are, they, are, they are cash starved. Uh, we are looking at s investing in some fintech companies. Okay. I, I, I believe we are a fintech company, but again, now... We're we, not fintech the way <laughs> that it is perhaps in the United States, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, we come in suits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fintech, you have to come in shorts and t-shirt, right? And you have, a, you have to have a different mindset where you want the innovative juices mm -hmm. to, to, to flow down. And now we become fairly large. I'm still, I believe we are a startup. You know, one of our missions is to be a lean organization. And we say we are an ultra lean, next generation ultra lean credit champion. And we mean live, eat, breathe these, this statement that we are next generation, it's my average age in my company is below 40, okay. right? It's a very young, energetic yeah. company. Uh, ultra, that, that's, that's next generation. Ultra Lean is, when we started, we said we will not have brick and mortar. Yeah. We use technology and we launched uh, 2,000 uh, outlets in 1,000 locations. Till today, I have 30 offices. The, and actually, three or four of offices which are rented the rest are business centers, plug and play. So it's it's actually ultra lean. And Credit Champion is we will champion the art of buying credit so that we can give affordable credit to, to, to the masses. Oh, you want to trade credit? No, credit is, is, mm. is um, the, the loans that we buy, right? Okay. The risk that we buy. So we would want to give loans to afford We want to make it affordable for all the masses. Not only affordable, eligible. Mm. So people who can't get a loan, you know, this is where that khwabo se hai ish comes yeah. in. We want them to be able to come and get a bike. Why should they be deprived? Mm. Because he doesn't have a credit history, because he doesn't have an identity card. It's not fair, right? We need them also to come up and that's how growth will happen in the emerging economy. You know, somewhere down the line, we, I realized from two, three people, we become 5,000 people. Now it is slightly challenging to do innovation. Mm. And now I'm seeing a lot of you know, FinTech companies coming in. You know, we've gone and visited the Bay. We've seen what's going on there. My mandate is, or inorganically, can I invest in two or three fintech companies, mm. which have to be, because a, fi a fintech company has to have a different culture, yeah. right? It's, it's, it, it can't be coming in a suit. They can't be, uh, you know, be a very custom kind of, uh, the culture is very open, very different, no hierarchies. It's a, it's yeah, a flat shot. So, so we are trying to invest in two or three of these fintech companies, which can then fold into FinCorp, or we can use that synergies into giving can credit. Can you share like how much of the uh, capital you're allocating for inorganic small, growth? Small, small, small capital. For, for, for fintech is small. Okay, the for total inorganic growth? Depending on the, depending on the opportunity. So you now, what, you've hired people to help you find targets? Are you, have you already, already identified targets? Uh, we are opportunistic, you know. Once, since, we've, since we've got the funds uh, in, our, in, in, in the company, uh, every, every day I get some target you from You didn't evaluate really good. <laughs> uh, it's believed to be on the uh, block. <laughs> <laughs> so really, really good, it's a, it's, a, it's a good asset. I believe it's a good asset. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, I mean, I can, I, we are doing that. What, what really good is doing, we are trying to do organically. Correct. Right? So we, want, we would want to get something in which uh, there is synergies we can get and uh, we, we get a good, good value for our buck. Bharat Financial is supposed to be on the block too. They were, talking, they were talking yeah. to Indus in bank. I don't yeah. know what happened. No, that I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not aware of that. And an IPO? Is that how you're going to provide an exit to your share, uh, to the 
private equity guys or is that some, just a natural progression? I think it's a natural progression. I think it's a natural progression. At some point, we'd want to unlock value not only for the private equity, but for Hero Moto, for the family and for all the investors. And we could see perhaps doing some fundraising in the calendar year 2017. Yes. Can yes. You, how much would that be? It would be similar to what we did last year. Last the 1200 year. odd crores. So it would be similar. But Hopefully this year. If not calendar, it will be a fiscal year. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I also understand that you like to incubate startups. Yes. yes. What is that about? How so, did you get into that? So it's a passion, right? And I, we, so there's a friend of mine, uh, a very close friend, Vaman and me, Vaman Sagar from Mother Son. Uh, both of us uh, have a passion of social entrepreneurship. We share that passion. We share that vision. And uh, both of us, He's done really well in his own right. He's got a turnaround story where he's yes. turned around a loss-making company into super profitable. Uh, in my last four years stint with FinCorp, we've built and created a value of nearly a billion dollars for our stakeholders, and we've started from grounds up. So we want to use this experience to, 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 to incubate, I wouldn't say startups, to incubate entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. right? There are a lot of entrepreneurs in India who want to come in, who we want to give direction to. So we have a small fund, which is proprietary money, uh, being run professionally. But both of us spend maybe two or three days in a month with our entrepreneurs. We try and do businesses which are synergetic to either of our companies. Okay. Not only limited to that, the bigger and larger vision is to create more social entrepreneurs, more companies, more entrepreneurship, and to encourage it. It's, we're not doing it for the money. But would we have heard of any of the entrepreneurs you may have uh, provided guidance to? So uh, one of our companies is uh, uh, Rapido, which is the largest two-wheeler uh, taxi company. A company called Shuttle, which uh, now is, uh, now Sequoia is providing the mentorship. Mm. We, are, we are out of it. We are still an investor. But initially, there were a lot of thoughts that we... We, 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 we uh, bounced with each other and we, we provided them uh, the, to, to uh, provided them a pa platform to get to where they have gotten to. Scoop Whoop was another company of ours. Oh, yeah. Scoop was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I have not provided any guidance. None of us have. It's just an investment that we okay. have done, right? So Scoop Whoop is, is, is a company, um, company where we have invested. Uh, Policy Bazaar. Okay. So is a company where Raman and me both have invested. Yash, uh, Yashish is a good friend and... Uh, we meet once in a while to bounce off ideas. You guys like media companies. <laughs> <laughs> we like, uh, I think it's a, it's a good business to be in. <laughs> it's a good business to be in, yeah. Abhiman, would you um, agree that you have perhaps been one of the fastest to grow a $1 billion startup? Hero Fincorp did yeah. start over with two yeah. people, as yeah. you said, and it's a billion dollars now. Yeah, I think we have been one of the fastest, I would say, but we, we our valuation is just shy of a billion. I would have liked it to be a billion. Okay. From 2013 to now, our valuation is just shy, but we are getting there. We are getting to that billion mark, and that's a metric which I track very, very closely. And uh, but I would believe, as an NBFC, we are one of the fastest NBFCs to reach this magic 10,000 10, crore mark in terms of assets under management. More important, we've been the fastest to roll out 2,000 uh, outlets with technology. I have not heard of any other company which has done so. Mm. With with the end to end technology for acquisition, are but you beating some of the big banks? I would say we are we are beating most of the comp competition. Yes, we are meeting. We are Where would you be in the pecking order? In the two wheeler finance, I would be number one. You'd be number one. And in in in, in hero, mm. if I say uh, in India, we'd be top three. Who's your mentor? I would imagine I would imagine it's your grandfather <laughs> or, or Mr. Pawan Minjal, but. Who is the one person you look up to? So I, I have always lived with my grandfather, right? And uh, he's someone who not only me, my whole team, we look up to. And my team and me have been fortunate that when we started, we've spent a lot of time with him, engaging with him in terms of, uh, you know, what we are doing, business. And one thing he used to keep telling us was, uh, one was, Abhi Manu, kitni bike hui? Second, at the same, same breath, he used to say, Hole, hole. Don't don't. That was all the non-Punjabis. Don't go too fast, right? Because he was saying he was saying he's suddenly going to crores, you know, when he started the business. Mr. Pawan Munjal is my chairman, and he's been like a father figure slash mentor. And his philosophy is 
just to push me as as hard as he can in terms of thinking big. Mm. He's saying, okay. do not blink, think big. And if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have thought of thought so big to reach 10,000 crores. I would be happy at that three, 400 crore kind of size. Yeah. So he's actually pushed us to think bigger than big. And whenever you go to him with a with a with a problem or a or an issue, he says, "Go figure it out yourself." Right? That's how you learn. That's right? how you yeah. learn. And I have had a couple of discussions, conversations with Mr. Sunil Mittal, who I really look up to. I think he's he's done done a great job. And uh, uh, I've tried. We we we've had. I've discussed discussed my business here and there with him when I meet him. But he's one guy I really look up to outside of of, yeah, of he, the family. Yeah, he, he built it all from scratch. Absolutely. And uh, he used to look up to my granddad, right? So, yeah. coincidentally, I saw. And you all are from Ludhiana. Absolutely. I guess that connection yeah, absolutely, also helps. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Abhimanyu Munjal, we wish you all the very best and we look forward to keep getting you back on ET now. You better give us an interview after your next fundraising or an acquisition, absolutely. whichever one comes first. Absolutely. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash etnow.